Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm in the Maktaba at Medina College uh, where we teach Arabic, Islamic studies and Quran. Today I'm going to be speaking about one of the books, the course books which we use and which is commonly taught in Egypt as well as other countries and it's called Al-Arabiya Bayna Yadayk. Now there's always a lot of discussion uh, if you're a student studying the Arabic language uh, between the Medina book curriculum and the this curriculum which came out afterwards. Which one's better? Uh, I think we've done a video before, you can uh, watch that on the channel where we have a short comparison between the two. However, this one's going to be an in-depth review of Al-Arabiya Bayna Yadayk, uh, looking at how much it costs, how many books there are, i.e. how many levels, and what you study in the first book, and a breakdown of the book as well, how it's divided, and also give you some uh, references where you can study it online uh, inshallah for free or if you want to join the MCL portal you can uh, inshallah join that where we'll be adding this as a course in the future inshallah. So this is a book Al-Arabi Bain Yadayk. When it first got released the ones I have are these three big uh, volumes somewhere over there uh, but now they've divided each one into two uh, and the cost if you're going to pick it up of these books, you can pick it up from Dar es Salaam. There you can see uh, each book uh, is twenty-five pounds, and that's level one, part one, level one, part two. So it's divided the books into two parts, or the levels into two books basically. Where the old one it was one big book, right? And then you have level uh, two, part one, part two, level three, part one, and part two. Or you can get the whole set on eBay. Right, you can get the whole set on eBay for £120. So it's quite an expensive book. Uh, it's definitely worth the money, but it's quite expensive compared to the Medina book syllabus. It is a lot bigger. You do get a lot more pages. It's a lot better quality pages as well. So you're basically getting what you paid for. Once you have the book, obviously, if you need an electronic copy, you can always download the electronic copy. Again, this is the old version where it's in three books, right? Volume one, volume two, volume three and the Muqaddimah which explains how to benefit from the book. So you can download um, a, a PDF copy as well of the book. So that's the generally how much the book costs. Let's have a look at the book itself and how you can benefit from studying the book as a self, as a self, uh, uh, as your self-study, right? So an explanation of the book, how the book's structured, so inshallah you can benefit from uh, self-study in the book. It's called the Arabi Yabayna Yadayk. Right, and it's to teach non Arabs how to speak and converse in Arabic. So, the book, how it's structured, uh, you've got basically uh, you've got 16 lessons, right? Uh, you've got 16 lessons, uh, and for example, here's the first lesson. Let's get this a bit bigger. You've got 16 lessons, Rihdatul Ula. Right, Athania, Athalitha, right, Al Rabba. After every two lessons, you've got a test, right? A test based upon the previous two lessons where you test yourself, okay? And the topics are general topics for conversation. So, this is where it differs from the Medina book syllabus. The Medina book syllabus teaches you the building blocks of the language, the Arab and the grammar, how to understand words, phrases, sentences nominal sentences, then verbal sentences afterwards. So it's a lot slower in terms of building up. It doesn't go into themes. This course, it teaches you the Arabic language uh, for conversational purposes. So it starts off with subjects on uh, greetings and getting to know one another, the family, accommodation, daily routines in life, all right? And so as you can see, it's got a different format completely, right? Uh, food and drink, the prayer, and then a test again, education, work, right? Stuff that you're going to be doing on a daily basis and so you can speak about it as well. Then in the middle of the book, you've got a exam, which is halfway exam, right? A halfway, al-iqtibar al-nisfi, right? And then it goes back on to continuing with the subjects, shopping, the weather, people and places, hobbies, traveling, Hajj and Umrah, which Hajj is coming up, health and holidays. 
and then it has a final exam as well so in terms of the structure and how it's laid out then it's excellent it's excellent all right why because not just has it got all the topics that you need for conversational it, it's going to introduce verbs from the very beginning and it's going to give you tests along the way after every two lessons to test your knowledge so you can assess what you need to review and what you need to revise at the end of the book it's got the um a vocab list right all of them a vocab list for every lesson and a vocab list for the whole book maybe that's an overkill i.e there's two don't need that many but in any case that's the general outline of the book so book one this is an old form we've got 16 lessons the new print which we which i just showed you it breaks these 16 lessons into two books right book level one part one and level two level two part two but generally speaking it's called level one because this is the beginner's level and this is a foundation book you need to master book one how do you master book one that's what we're going to speak about now looking at first of all how the book is structured and how you can study it in different ways where you can uh, come to it from so because it's a comprehensive book a conversational book it's going to cover all four skills and what are the four skills that we're speaking about we're speaking about listening and it's number one speaking number two reading number three and writing number four these are the four skills so listening and understanding what you hear so there's an audio for that however in most cases if you're doing it in class the teacher is going to be reading you're going to be listening speaking there's prompts we're going to have a look at in a minute reading and uh writing that's the four skills and as it pertains to the language itself then there's at the beginning because it's the first level there's distinguishing between the sounds of the the alphabet and learning words so whenever you do an arabic language course or a language course generally speaking english or arabic the methodology is to learn the vocab right the vocab the key of new the new words for the text from the text and then understand the conversation by listening and then uh so it's basically three uh is present i.e the teacher presents the vocab the teacher presents the conversation that you listen to practice you try it out produce you do the task to show that you've understood and you can produce the language so that's the methodology as you as it pertains to learning uh conversational arabic or any other language now it's not the only methodology there's translation methodologies there's other methodologies for using language translation methodology you see it a lot translate from arabic to english translate from english to arabic you'll find that in a lot of different books inshallah perhaps uh, in the next uh, re review we'll speak about that a bit more so that's the uh, general how the book is structured and then in it he gives you a breakdown of within each lesson how it's broken down so here you can see the beginning it shows the adult which is the basically a text right the conversation then it shows you the vocab right so that's two three pages for that three pages for that uh, then it shows you the nahu rules right four pages for that then it shows you uh, uh, uh pronunciation as well as listening three pages for that speech and then finally reading and writing four pages for that so each uh each lesson right has six basically within each lesson you have six sub lessons right and that means that six you've got 16 lessons each lesson has six sub lessons he's saying that a total number of lessons going to have is going to be 96 96 okay why is this important for a student the reason why is you can say to yourself i'm going to finish this book al arabi in 97 days because i'm going to do one dars every single day 96 days or you can say to yourself i'm going to complete it in 48 days divide it in half and i'm going to be doing two of these every day so i'll do reading and that day one day two day three and so on and so forth until i complete the book so once you under understand how the book is formatted how the book is structured then you're able to 
set yourself a timetable in which case you can measure the completion of it and each lesson shouldn't take more than an hour so for example to complete this book you can say 96 hours is uh, sufficient 96 hours is sufficient and then here it breaks a bit it breaks it down a bit more how each each one's divided how many uh, hours it should take and stuff like that so this is in the introduction to the book now um, for students at Medina College as we're adding this to the syllabus as part of the Arabic language we've got the Nahal which is Medina book we've got the Sarf Medina book and we're doing conversation from here uh, we focus only on two parts of it and this is in the third term and this is just to show you that when you're teaching Arabic language as a teacher or even as a student it's not the case that you have to study the entire book you might take sections from the book and utilize them so for example as a teacher I'll use this book for the conversational and I'm going to focus primarily on two aspects the speech because it gives me prompts I'll show you that in a minute and I'm going to and I focus on the the ard at the beginning which is the hiwar right the conversation and then we go to the prompts and through that if there's any words that they don't know we'll ask about it we'll teach the any unfamiliar vocab all right so that's what we focus on why because the qira'a and the kitaba we're doing it in medina reader right so you can combine some people always ask should i study medina book or should i study arabi of any day you can combine between them as long as you have a teacher who's proficient and knows how to uh is good at organizing organizing the material so that's generally the book this is again like I said the introduction this shows you the uh what when you see these images here these icons what they mean the tape recorded is Istema. unfortunately there's no tapes anymore so I don't that I don't know how you replace that you might say digital mp3 or something right tape recorders are definitely no longer there Iqra, read uktub write unzur look tekellem speak and uh, stuff like that and this is gives you the breakdown of the first six lessons we spoke about that already but here it gives you also a more in-depth how it's studied so tahiyya wa ta'aruf greetings and getting to know and then it mentions for example you know uh, teaching yourself or introducing yourself to others right and stuff like that it mentions the most important parts i what you have to focus on the vocab and then it also mentions is cut off here whatever's on the other side now and that continues throughout the book right dirasa al-amal this is the second part of the page all right uh what the aswat and stuff like that now one of the criticisms and it's not a criticism but as you can see everything is in the arabic language which means if you're a student just beginning which you would be if you're starting on book one you cannot self-study this book okay even though it's conversational arabic you can't self-study because it's all in Arabic so you need a teacher to explain it to you to explain how to do each of the exercises okay because it's not in English if you're starting by yourself complete beginners then you may not use this book if you you will not use this book if you don't have a teacher you will have to use something like master in Arabic or another book which is written for students who are learning Arabic in English in in the UK all right so it's got English text in there explaining how to do the tasks explaining the grammar where this is all Arabic and this is authored for students learning the Arabic language in an Arab speaking country where the teacher is going to be communicating in Arabic the whole time and likewise for the Medina book syllabus except that in the later editions the instructions have been translated to English so you can self-study by reading the instructions it becomes possible although still not ideal so for the Arabi Ibn Yadayk and for the Medina book syllabus you need a teacher especially for beginners level where there are other courses where you don't need a teacher like Gateway to Arabic you can begin with it's got English in it and then you can move on so that's an overview of what's in the book and this is a book on book two book three or level two level three similar different topics more in-depth uh, language more complex language structures let's have a look at the book itself we'll look at one chapter as an example and then from that you can work out how it is for the rest so this got a picture at ta'aruf. you can see the hand shaking hands that shows you already it's greetings and getting to know greetings being shaking hands assalamu alaikum marhaban ahlan wa sahlan and getting to know ismi my name is what's your name 
if I'm a teacher, what do you do? I'm from the country, i.e. the basically breaking the ice. And that's always the first thing that you learn in a language course. So again, like we said, the first thing that it begins with is the hiwar, which means the conversation. And it says, look, listen. In other words, you're going to listen to your teacher read this conversation and practice pronouncing it and reading it, imitating and copying the voice of your teacher. Um, and then what's nice about this, it's got the hiwar between two men, it's got the hiwar be between two women. So you can use, you can see, you know, mas muki, right? So that the, 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 the women that are on the course or women that are studying, they can get to see how to converse with women and mesmuka, men, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the first thing, that's the hiwar, conversation one. Conversation two, hiwar atharith, conversation three, hiwar arabic, conversation four. The first set of conversations is greetings, my name, your name. The second set of conversations, as you can see, is looking at countries and nationalities, right? Jinsiya and balad, min aina anta anna min. And then you've got Hiwar al khamis and Sadis. So you've got a lot of conversations, right? So you've got six small conversations. This is now introducing a friend. So here you can see three people. So and you can see them introducing the friend to somebody else. So sometimes conversations are two people, sometimes it's three people, just giving you all of those scenarios. That's the first part done, the conversations. Then you have the second part, which is vocab. Look and listen. Again, teacher repeats, you repeat after the teacher. This is a vocab for professions. This is a vocab for pronouns. This is a vocab for demonstrative pronouns. This is a vocab for jobs, family members, right? And then countries. After that, it's going to have a listening exercise to test your vocab. So now, you know, you look at the picture, you're going to say the thing, you're going to tick which one it is, right? Misar, Surya, you tick. And again, this is a vocab exercise. Again, vocab exercise. And after that, you get to the grammar. Now here, the grammar, isn't necessarily grammar in the sense that it doesn't explain the grammar especially in book one and there, there's a reason for that the reason for that is if the grammar is explained it's adding more vocab that need an explanation and grammar's uh, terminology is terminology and jargon in these concepts it's very difficult for you to understand as a beginner right so you can see it avoids it now the courses where you're studying uh, conversational arabic at university or at school in the UK and they have a different type of syllabus which has English in it. It will explain the grammar from the very beginning uh, in English, in terminology, and it sometimes can be quite confusing. Um, uh, here it's sufficing with just here grammar, I guess you could say it means tarqib more than anything else, how the words are put together. I mean aina and anamin. Now after the grammar, so this is useful. Okay, this is where it's really useful in terms of a conversation. So you've got, for example, um, and this is why I really like the book, and this is why I, this is the parts that I use as a teacher when I'm teaching my class. I may not use all the beginning bit, but this is the part we speak about. So you have this mithal example, Hada Achi Hu Madaris, Achi Madaris, right? You had Hada. You've got prompts. So now you get the students to look at the uh, words and say the sentences without looking at it. So you look at Ukht Mudarrisa, Hadhi Ukhti Hiya Mudarrisa and you fill in the gaps. Right? Hadha Sadiqi Huwa Tabib. Hadhi Sadiqati Hiya Tabiba. Hadha Ahi Huwa Muhandis, right? So you get them to practice. They take turns, another student comes and takes turns. And then now they're using these prompts, right? These two words prompts and they're making putting them in the place where you have the bolded words and then just replacing the words and that way you're building up conversational uh, practice because you're speaking phrases not mem words which you put together which is what happens when students study the Medina book syllabus so, again same thing min aina anta anam in Pakistan min aina anta anam and min aina anti anam in Turkey min aina huwa huwa min Surya right so they practice by uh, filling using these two prompts to make conversation and then after that they, you can build it up the students can build that by speaking about themselves or their friend or their family member in the class this is a way in which it becomes useful for conversation they're not reading this they've looked at it they've learned the prompt and they're applying it right you know so they can then join these two right i.e. how the 
Min aina huwa huwa min Pakistan. They keep adding and building more phrases to the conversation. Okay, this is under Nahu, but again, it can be used for conversation for prompts. Uh, this gives you the Nahu summary. Malakhas at tarkib I like I said, Nahu in this level is really how you put the words together, not the Arab, which is the meaning of Nahu, i.e., the changing at the end of the, the words. Here, they're looking at how you form words together to make phrases. So, this is quite useful to have as a resource. Then, so we've done the Hiwar, we've done the Mufradat, the second, we've done the third one, which is the Nahu. Now we look at Aswat, i.e., the words and how they're pronounced. And remember, this is level one and level two, level three. You won't have this. So it's basically showing you how to pronounce and differentiate between kaf, right, and kha, how to differentiate between these two words, and then practice doing that with ayat from the Quran, as you can see here, and then understanding or listening practice, right, the teacher's going to say a word, checking your vocab, did he say tabib or did he say mudarris, you have to check and see what you know, likewise down here, uh, likewise here, more listening, more listening, and now it comes to kalam, which is speech, and this is similar to the tarkib al nahawi the sense that you now have a prompt, mithal, you have, so that, what do you do as a student, with a friend, you're going to take this prompt, Ismi Fatima, Ana Misriya, Ana Min Misr. Ahlan wa Sahlan. Student one now becomes the person that's taking these three prompts and putting the name Mahmoud here in the place of Fatima, where he's from, in the place of where she's from, and what his country is, or his nationality and his country. And then the other person will say Ahlan wa Sahlan, and they swap roles. So it'll be like Ismi Mahmoud, Ana Turkiyu, right? And I'm in Turkey, like that. And likewise as well, you do the same thing. So here's where you get the conversational practice, right? You get the students speaking to the other students using these prompts, but again, not necessarily reading it, but looking up and speaking about it. And then after that, you've got more conversation practice. Then you've got testing what you know, and then answering the questions yourself. And then you're building up your own profile in Arabic after they come to reading and writing. So reading and writing, as you can see, is look, listen, say. I look, you can see the picture, you read it, Anna, you listen to it, Anna, you repeat it, and then you read it, Anna, and then you say it, Anna, right? Look, listen, read, and then say. Uh, and then it gives you exercises, whether they're matching exercises like this, right? Taliba, right, matching the words, so you can show that they're the same, you can recognize them. That's reading practice, more reading practice, right? And then you have some writing practice, writing practice, writing practice, and that's the end of the lesson. You go to lesson two. After lesson two, which is about the family, same type of format, you've got a test. And this is also what makes the book really, really useful and really beneficial. You've got a test, which is based upon the Mufradat, and then I, the vocab test, which is based upon the Nahu, uh, and the Nahu, right? So that's Al Arabiya Bain Yadayk. Of course, it's a very good syllabus, but you need a teacher. You can't self study it or study it by yourself at all. Um, no. If you have any questions, inshallah, you want to know more about the courses at Medina College or about the MCL portal where you can study some of these courses online, then please leave a comment, inshallah, and somebody will get back to you and also if there are any uh, curriculums that you'd like to see reviewed in upcoming videos leave a comment inshallah and uh, someone will have a look at it and then we'll be able to add it to uh, the book reviews that we want to do in the future I, ho uh, I hope this is beneficial and it gives you a way in which you can embrace and engage in the studying of the Arabic language Remember, the Arabic language is the language of the Quran, it's a language of Islam, it's a language of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's a language spoken by a billion people around the world. So by learning the language, you're going to be advancing your Iman, growing your Iman, and advancing your prospects uh, in terms of work as well. So it's a benefit for your Akhirah, as well as a benefit for your Dunya. So make sure you're learning the Arabic language. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi